Okay, good afternoon to everyone. Um, thank you for the organizers for letting me speak. Um, I want to start off with a simple picture. I want all of you to look here, and I want you to think about whether you've seen this picture before or not. So a lot of you probably have. It's been shared a million times on Facebook. It's on Twitter. It's on Instagram. It's everywhere. And for a lot of us, this has become an iconic representation of the Nepalese ed education system. The system that our forefathers went through, the system that we went through for 13 to 14 years of our lives, and the system that our siblings and our children are going through right now. Now, this is a system where no matter how different, unique, multi-talented, or skilled you are, you are still judged using the same metric. One exam paper defines you, and one exam paper is used for all. Whether you pass or fail on that exam, will determine whether you pass or fail the system. And for people who do the latter, there are unforeseen circumstances. And this is where it all goes wrong. Now, the failure of our system to meet the needs of its, uh, needs of its children has caused a lot of problems to think that they don't have talent, that they can't study hard enough, and that they aren't accepted. But that's the problem. I go, I, this picture is just the surface. Beyond this, I say it isn't a problem with education, but it's a problem with the act of education itself, learning. Now, when I say that word, I want all of you here to think, what comes, what comes into your mind when I say learning? So just reflect on the word, right? For a lot of people I've talked to, and for me personally, what I've learned comes into mind. So number one, did I learn Newton's three laws of physics? Did I learn that an ant can carry 10 times of its body weight? Where did I learn? Did I learn this in a classroom? Did I learn this in a school? Did I learn this at university? And how much did I learn? Did I learn two chapters today? Did I solve five mathematical equations? Or did I memorize three poems? That's what comes into our mind. But have you ever asked yourself, how do you learn? How does the text on paper, how does the thing on a book get inside your head? What is the process behind learning itself? Now, this is a question that not a lot of us ask but it's a question that an interviewer asked me six months ago. So when I was applying to college, an interviewer proceeds on asking me, what kind of a learner are you? And for a moment, I'm about to say, well, I study all the time. The book, I write and read, and I never leave the house. But something stopped me, and I told her that I am a social learner, that I learn through arguments, that debates and discussion are where I learn the best, that it isn't the textbook, that is not where I go, but, is with, but it is with a group of friends that I argue, I read articles, and I debate. And she was astounded for a bit. She told me she'd never heard an, heard an answer like that. And that's the problem with our system. Learners like me are not accepted. Now, where's the next slide? OK. So now, a couple months, uh, a year ago, I wrote a paper on linguistic imperialism. Linguistic imperialism is when one language is dominant over the other. And through this study, I found something really remarkable. So you can't really see it here, but 60% of the children I talked to told me that the internet was where they went. When they had problems with their homework or when they had problems solving equations, they didn't go to their parents or teachers. It was the internet. Another 25% would tell me that television was another big source of information. And only 15% would tell me that the textbook is where they went for answers. Now, what we're doing is we're categorizing all these, we're categorizing the 85% into the 15%. And what this does is we're applying the same rule to all. Now, there are a lot of learners out there. I myself am a social learner. Debates and discussion are where I learn best. There are tinkerers. There are kids who have a knack for tools and kids who like using technology. There are visual learners, people who use graphs and label diagrams, and that is how they understand the best. There are experiential learners, people who love experiencing what they're learning, but our system fails to accommodate for that. Now, in lieu with today's theme, this is changing. There are initiatives and projects all over Nepal which are trying to change this. It might be at a really small pace, but we are trying to get somewhere. A month ago, me and a couple of my friends who are here today started a project called Youth Together, or Drukpo Together. Now, when we all started off our gap years, we didn't really have a platform. We didn't really have a place to go and interact with people our age and to discuss our ideas and to share our thoughts. 
So a month ago, we established just that. Youth Together is a platform that tries to bring young minds together and dis to discuss ideas, to create projects, and just give them a platform where they can share and discuss. Other projects include 3DI Nepal. 3DI Nepal is a digital version of education, I would say. They use computer animation and graphics to teach kids. And in a world that is filled with information and technology, initiatives like this are key. Finally, what makes me really proud is 10 years ago, when 8th, 9th, and 10th grade rolled around, our parents would often say, well, stop with all the extracurriculars, no more co-curriculars, just go and study. But now I see parents going to schools and asking their teachers, asking the school leaders to allow their kids to learn in different ways, to allow them to do art, to do visual art, and all forms of learning. And this is a rapid change in our education. Now, it's still going to take many years for all forms of learning to be accepted and for universal learning to be accepted. But the change can start with us. Now, if you've ever had a child come up to you and try to talk about what they learned in school and what he or she is doing in school, then instead of dismissing them, have you ever tried to talk to them? And have you ever seen the passion in their eyes when they get excited over what they learned in school? Well, that passion and that excitement is a form of learning. Our system does not allow for this, but then we can start by acknowledging it. It's, gonna, it's still going to take 20 to 30 more years for our policymakers to sit down and accept this. But then we can start that change now. So the next time a child or anybody else comes up to you and tries to strike up a conversation, talk to them. Understand what they're doing. Understand what type of learning they are doing. Finally, I want to leave all of you with this. Learning is not static. It's a universal process. Thank you.